Hello, drummers and other creatures. Uh, I'm here with another fellow drum teacher, a uh, chap by the name of Jeff Johnson, who's just released his second drumming book. Uh, Jeff is a teacher who's based in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, for me, Richmond is in sort of West London, but uh, <laughs> Jeff's in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he's an illustrious drummer. He's played with the Glenmiller Orchestra. He studied with some of the great teachers, uh, a big name being Joe Morello. He's also studied with Steve Fiddick that I'm familiar with from writing some amazing big band books. And uh, he's a very, uh, I don't know, you know, you're a busy teacher, aren't you, working uh, online, which uh, I'm a big fan of, and also uh, in person. And it says in your uh, details that you, you teach students of all ages and abilities, which I always think is interesting. Uh, it's great working with beginners as well as more advanced students, I find. Um, so would you like to tell us a little bit about your background in drumming? Like, How did you get started with the instrument and what kind of stuff did you do as you sort of develop your professional career? Yeah, well, I actually, uh, yeah, it's nice to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I actually got started in school band <clears throat> uh, in Pennsylvania, where I grew up, uh, just a few states north of, of here. Um, they had school band starting in fourth grade. So by the time I was in fourth grade, I was you know, learning quarter notes, bounces, all, all that. And it was, I think, maybe once a week in, in school band. Uh, we get pulled out of class. You get pulled out of a different class each week. And uh, you just learn a little bit on, on a drum pad. Uh, so that, that's how I started. And that's how I learned all the different note values, right? or most of the note values. Um, and it was, uh, it was with a band teacher who uh, was probably a trumpet player or a saxophone player. And <clears throat> just, showed, you know, just showed everyone the, the basics on, on their instrument. Uh, so after that, I sort of uh, went to the music store, picked up some, uh, picked up some books. Actually, picked up one book, "Realistic Rock" by uh, Carmine Peace. Yep. And just sort of felt my way through there. Went through the sound supplements with it, um, and that's how I sort of taught myself the basics of of drum set. So I really didn't have much guidance uh, at first. Uh, then I started uh, taking lessons at a, at a music store, and that was more or less, uh, yeah, just a um, a community teacher, a you know, teacher from the community who uh, showed different drum beats and different songs by usually by rote. Usually mm -hmm. was not um, usually was not anything written down. He would show you a drum part to the song and you'd play it, and. Cool. Um, after um, after a while, I realized that uh, that I was sort of missing a lot of those pieces. So I found out that Steve Fiddick lived a few towns away from me, and Steve was in college at Wilkes University, at that time Wilkes College, and Steve um, Steve had been studying with Morello at that point, and he, I believe before I before I ever met Steve, he had also studied with Ed Sof. Okay. And then when Ed, when Ed uh, moved to Texas to teach at University of North Texas, Steve sought out uh, another teacher, which ultimately was Joe Morello. So when I, when I studied with Steve, I would drive like 20 minutes or so to, uh, uh, to see Steve and took lessons in Steve's bedroom, basically. Okay. And Steve would show me the, the Morello concepts, the, 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 full, the full stroke uh, the re the rebounding concepts, the mass you know master studies. Uh, you showed me the the level system concepts, the upstrokes, downstrokes, all of that, and then and uh, is that stuff uh, that came from Stone? Yeah, that, yeah, that sort Stone. Of uh, yeah, Stone actually, uh, and we could get into this um, in in more detail when we when we talk about the level system. But but mm -hmm. yeah, Stone actually uh, actually uh, applied certain heights like three inches, six inches, nine inches, 12 inches. Um, Morello re revised that a little bit for up, basic upstrokes and downstrokes and utilizing the, utilizing the height based on what, you, what volume you need. Mm -hmm. So if it was, you know, if you needed a mezzo forte volume, you, you may only come up this high. If you needed fortissimo, you may come up this high. Uh, but this would still be considered, I'm not hitting the drum right now because... Yeah is a zoom but you know this might be considered a full stroke 
add a mezzo-forte dynamic where that may be a full circuit of forte dynamic. Yeah. Okay, that's so, cool. So you went and uh, took some lessons with Steve Fiddy. You must have felt quite sort of determined, you know, you were determined to take your drums to a serious level, I suppose, at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, at the, and at that time, I was also um, studying with the instructor from Wilkes University, the same instructor that Steve studied with. <clears throat> so I sort of followed in Steve's footsteps there <clears throat> because we... Um, we were in a smaller, you know, smaller area, um, you know, sort of the coal mining area or of, uh, of Pennsylvania. Yeah, it wasn't like we were right next to a major city. So I, I tried to, uh, I tried to seek out the best, the best instructors. And, and that was Steve Fiddick and Robert Nowak, Bob Nowak. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and Bob, uh, Bob taught me the classical percussion side of it. And Steve, uh, Steve basically taught me the hand technique side as well as drum set coordination styles, et cetera. Okay, and did, did you go on to study at university as well? Yes, yeah. I, I studied at uh, Wilkes University at first, and then I transferred over to um, uh, transferred over to Capital University in Columbus, Ohio, studied with Bob mm -hmm. Bryhop. Right. And from there, uh, I went, to, uh, went back to Pennsylvania and uh, would commute in uh, once a week to study at Drummers Collective in New York City. All right, okay, a very famous school. And so did, did you keep working on the sort of classical percussion side of things as well, or did you gravitate towards the jazz and, and other styles? More, more so the drum set, the jazz, and the other, and the other styles. Um, yeah, it it's, seems like, at, at least in the U.S., it seems like you, you would gravitate for, uh, more toward one or, or the other. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I as, as Joe, you know, and, and Joe Morello really had a, a, a big part in that. He's, you know, he, um, he basically, to paraphrase Joe, he said, you know, there's so much to learn with, with classical percussion. You're going to be practicing hours on timpani and xylophone and, and everything else. Um, and then you have, and then you have this instrument, and then you have the drum set. <clears throat> um, is that going to be, um, is that going to be something that you just add on or is that going to be a main area of study? Yeah. So, do you feel like uh, learning classical percussion uh, sort of gave you something that that benefited your understanding of drum set as well? Was it a beneficial part of your education? Yeah. Yes. Uh, for for reading, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, there's and that's where uh, that's where I really shine and uh, in different situations, <clears throat> like doing cruise uh, cruise ship work. Uh, when I when I was on on cruise ships, we didn't really have rehearsals. Mm -hmm. You go in and you read the. Um, I'm not sure if you did any cruise ship work, but when you when you no. do a cruise ship, you go in and you read you you basically read the show. Mm -hmm. um, whether yeah. it's a, whether it's a full production show, whether it's a fly on act, you know, a juggler that has has background uh, or not really background music, but uh, but has the, these little cue musics to cue in and on um, on stage, off stage. Um, almost if you if you think of something like l the late night band when they when they play the play the artist on yep. play the artist off and then and then when um, if someone comes on and and they're a singer they bring charts there's really you know sometimes sometimes there's rehearsals if it's a brand new act coming on uh, but when uh, when you get on stage as the new person in the group and yep. everyone else knows the show none of the other people in the band want to rehearse <laughs> yeah they want to be they want to be um, they want to be yeah sorry oh sorry yeah they they want to be in port enjoy uh at in port in enjoying the 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 weather mm -hmm. down in the bahamas or wherever yeah of so, course <clears throat> so and, and it was the same thing with the with the glenn miller orchestra you, you, know, you read the you read the charts and uh hope for the best so you yeah. so so the classical um <clears throat> now obviously when you're reading drum charts it's interpretation but you have to know the you have to know the basics of it first, and that's where the uh, that's where Bob Bob Nowak and his all of his reading assignments really came in uh, handy, because yeah. he made sure he made sure that I that I could read, and I and I hear you know a lot of students who um, who turn down gigs because they can't read, you know? yeah. and in fact I even have some students who um, do crew, who, who have done cruise ship work and they prefer to play with. Um, like a, a rock band on the ship and, and it's great you know um because they yeah. say well you know i'm not as comfortable reading so 
but I still want to do this. So let me play with a rock band on, on a ship or let me play with a jazz trio on, on a ship where, where they could still have that experience and, and um, where they could still have that experience and not have to uh, and not have to read a new <laughs> uh, yeah. a new chart every uh every, every few minutes so yeah um and so how did you get into teaching from being a sort of working drummer playing playing all those reading gigs did that something well, actually, that you started early on in your your drumming career or yeah be because it was such a small town uh, i grew up in hazelton pennsylvania um mm -hmm. and because it was such a small town there there was one main music store, um, both of, you know, I think maybe there are two, one, uh, one was bigger, one was smaller, both were family owned. Um, so again, it wasn't like being in a, in a major city where, uh, they, where if someone, uh, one store needed a, a drum teacher, they could just call the, you know, they could just call whoever and, and, and get them in. It was, uh, it was at the point where, well, one the uh, the teacher that I that I was studying with the one that I was learning sort of rock songs with um, was getting busy with his band so he said hey could you fill in and uh, and teach the students while I'm you know while I'm out playing all these gigs so I, I said yeah and I didn't know anything about teaching then so I basically did what what he did just showed the students uh you know showed the students songs and then i i realized at that point and i'm talking about you know being like 15 years old you know, not um <clears throat> not really having not really having a clue but i knew that there was more that i could be showing them so when i got the reins from that drummer um i picked up where he left off because that's where the students were that's what the students were used to just being shown here, play mm -hmm. this, you know, repeat after me. But I realized that the students didn't really know how to read music. They didn't know about, they didn't know as much about uh, reading technique. So I incorporated that I, to the best, to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And, um, and ever since it's been just an ongoing process for me trying to find the best, you know, the best material and also um me trying to to teach the students in the way that i would want have uh want to have been taught yeah so i try to think i try to think if i were in the student's shoes what would i have wanted to uh to be shown at that at that time yeah um and and it's a it's a little mix of everything you have to um you have to show the students how everything fits together how the pieces of the puzzle fit together yeah, but that's one of the challenges. you can't yeah you, you can't leave out the basics you can't leave out note reading i mean there's um and, and i i don't like to talk you know i don't like to speak negatively about other teachers but um over the years i've i've taught in other uh in other music stores and other uh studios and i've seen the same thing where i'll pass by a room and you have the little window on the door and I'll see the, um, the student taking a lesson, whether it's on guitar or drums or whatever. And I'll look in and there's no music stand in the, in the room. Right. And I think to my, I think to myself, right, well, even if someone's teaching mainly by road, um, they should expose the students to, um, to at least some, at least some theory, at least some musical notation. But I, but I look, I look in the 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 room, and I I don't even see a music stand. I think it's it, I think that sort of does the student um, a disservice. Yeah. And, do you, uh, what do you find uh, your average student's attitude to learning how to read is? I mean, do you get students who just go, oh yeah, I'm I'm you know I want to play some Green Day songs, and that guy's not reading music on a stand or whatever. I and mean, do you find that you have to sort of try and find different ways to encourage people to get into reading some of the time? Not really, because I use it as part of my my framework. Mm -hmm. So we start off. Um, so we start off with with snare drum, uh, with snare drum reading, and then we move uh, snare drum reading and technique, and then we move to to drum set. Mm -hmm. So it uh, so each uh, and, and even in in the emails that that I that I send back to my students. So if a student um, if a student inquires about lessons, I will 
tell them that the first part of the lesson is going to be reading and technique. And then the remainder of the lesson is going to be drum set. Mm -hmm. And I also explain to them why. And I think that that's a very important thing to do is explain to a student why you're doing something or why you're sub suggesting something. And the reason that, that I give the students for that is um, there's a lot going on on drum set. There, you have all these, you have all these drums, you have these cymbals, you're, you're hitting them with, with your hands, you're hitting them with your feet. And it can be a little overwhelming. So I, I always tell the student, we're going to start on one surface mm -hmm. and then move it to multiple surfaces. And that I think really helps because if you just say, we're going to do it this way because I said so, or we're going to do it this way because this is the way it's always been done the student is most likely going to um, take that as a negative, like, okay, well, all right. But if you, if you explain to the student why you're doing it, mm -hmm. and then the student sees the benefit of it. So when, when we say we're going to, we're going to start learning quarter notes or eighth notes on snare drum on one surface, mm -hmm. and then they move over to the drum set and they see how easy it is to actually play, oh, there's my eighth notes. So now I understand the, the concept of eighth notes. I understand the theory of eighth notes. So now more of my memory, more of my random access memory, or you know, uh, if you want to uh, compare your our brain to a computer, more of that is freed up to think about, oh, now on that first eighth note, my, my foot goes down. And yeah. and they're, and they're also they're reading it too. And and they're they're reading it and they're understanding it. So yeah. I think if, if we approach it, if we approach it that way from the start, then it's not one versus the other. It's, yep. it's all encompassing. Yeah, that makes sense. So how did you come about writing your own uh, book? Uh, well, like one of the, the reasons I'm interested in your books is because I've got like, a, where is it? A million drum books. So, you know, I've got all the famous books and a lot Me of the not famous <laughs> books as well. And there's so many books that there's like three pages that are really good. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of the other stuff is either superfluous or duplicates something or not all that relevant. And uh, your, both of your books are like because they, they cover a subject very thoroughly and you could kind of play the whole thing or at least 80% of the thing. Uh, and uh, the first book of yours that I'm familiar with is The Level System. And I think I did one of my videos about up, ups, yeah. downs and yeah. so on earlier on. And, um, uh, I'm, you know, yeah, I think you commented on it, didn't you? Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it and, gave, it, gave it a thumbs up and yeah. 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 And, and, and it's kind of, um, I sort of came to um, a lot of this stuff a lot later in my life. So I didn't have a sort of formal path of education. And so I was going through various phases um, where I'd studied with different teachers and there wasn't really a technical emphasis in a lot of my uh, learning. So I was trying to work out even from my 20s and 30s various issues that I was having and I had to sort of experiment with different things and I, I came across I understood the concept of the ups downs and and all of this uh, and I worked a lot of it out but when I found your book and I think it was recommended on I think Matt Patella or something um, yeah. uh, pushes the book you know he advertises that as one of the uh, texts that he uses a lot and I got yeah, a I was on, his, I just I was on his podcast yeah yeah okay so yeah so he's um, I I think I came across the book there and I got a copy of it and I just thought, you know, it, it's just a brilliant uh, thing that, that it just goes through the whole thing because you've got um, like something like accents and rebounds, I think, has all the up, up and down stroke stuff mm -hmm. in it. But it does now. Yeah, it, it does now. Um, oh, did it not before? The Is original did not. And, and in fact, yeah, uh -huh. here's, um, if you want to talk about. If you want to talk about the original. Uh huh. This was one of the first copies ever printed. Oh wow! Um, and I bought this um, after Joe passed. Uh, they were settling his estate, and and um, George Lawrence Stone actually um, sent Joe about a half a dozen copies of of the book. Yeah. Okay. And the first the first one uh, the first one's not was not sold. It's not being sold. They're trying to donate it to to a museum. I, I don't I don't know which one. Maybe the Percussive Art Society um, Museum, the um, 
Rhythm Arts Center or something like that. Um, but George Lawrence Stone sent um, w one copy, uh, one copy for Joe. This is, and then and then he's, he had about uh, a half a dozen copies that he sent out to uh, to Joe as, as well to to pass along to his students, and um, <clears throat> and I guess Joe was probably on the road when the when that package came in. So he, you know, he didn't just go into the teaching studio and say, here, check this book out. Mm -hmm. And it was found as part of Joe's estate when they were going, they were going through yeah. everything. And um, so that, that's that been in the hands of the master and then the hands of the other master as well. He's got, oh, wow. Okay. It was uh, signed to Joe from George Lawrence Stone. Yeah. Amazing. That's yeah. a real piece and, of and history. This, and, yeah, and this book is the way that uh, the, the way that it has been for um, for decades. Um, yeah. Just the recent revision has the uh, has the ups and down. Has uh, actually, it's like an arrow up, arrow down. Yeah. And um, but yeah, but I I got this off. Um, I think Marvin was was um, a longtime drum tech of of um, of Joe, and he was. Uh, he was auctioning off parts of the estate you know, um, and to help out Jean, uh, Jean, which is Joe's, uh, Joe's wife. Yeah. You because know, mm -hmm. obviously you know, she, she was left with, with a whole bunch of drum, uh, you know, drum equipment and, and yeah. everything. And, um, and I thought, um, uh, this was probably the most, the most sentimental because yeah. this is, um, I'd rather have, I'd rather have this than a pair of brushes that, that Joe owned at one point. And, and Jean, you know, Jean doesn't play drums, so she, no, um, sure. yeah, so she want so um, she wanted everything to be in, in good hands. So that's, um, but yeah, the, um, and that goes, and that goes to a point too that um, that Steve Fittick uh, talked about with me, uh, is he said, Joe, uh, you know, because Joe, I, I, I think was still not in good health when, uh, when he was, or when I was writing the level system. So I didn't talk to Joe too much about it, and, and Joe had passed by the time uh, the level system came out. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve, you know, um, Steve said to me, he said Joe didn't include a lot of that in his. In his in his books, he didn't include, and I think Joe may have mentioned this too, um, to me, uh, that Joe didn't include a lot of the how in his books. Yeah, so I think uh, something because, like Master Studies doesn't give you any insight into that if you don't already know about it. Right, right, yeah. And, and yeah. when you were taking a lesson with Joe, Joe would say, okay, this is down, up, you know, down, up, tap, 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 up, whatever. Yeah. Um, but Joe was very smart about that because he didn't want his books to only be used in one way. Um, he wanted some. You know, he wanted someone who picked up a pair of sticks to be able to benefit from the book. Right. Um, so if you if you say that this section has to be played just one way, um, then that decreases your audience. You know? Yeah. And I don't. And I don't think Joe did it from a. Um, I don't think Joe did it from a sales point of view, like, oh, I'll sell more books if I if I do this. I think he just wanted, um, I think he just wanted it to be all inclusive. So mm -hmm. if someone, um, you know, someone in the middle of the um, middle of the U.S. or middle of the U.K. just p bought that book, they could take it home and play it. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's why there weren't as there weren't instructions in in um, in master studies. There weren't instructions in in um, stick you know many there weren't many instructions in stick control or mm -hmm. accents and rebounds until until accents and rebounds was republished and the first few pages have the have the arrow up arrow arrow down yeah um but the level but, system kind of goes into a lot of depth to explain so some somebody i mean because the book is really just about how we apply these yeah. dynamic movements and so yeah it, 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 it there's enough information there that you can like you could glean it yourself, you know. So I mean, I I've sort of studied after that book, and I've worked with teachers and so on, as well. But there's there's enough there that you could kind of work out how to do it. Uh, I've gone through the the book with a few students, and they've really enjoyed it. And so when when students are ready for that sort of technical uh, 
I don't know, going in, into more depth with it. It's just the perfect book. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, um, as, as an author, um, and, and that really means a lot to me because as, as an author, you see sales, you know, you get the once, once a year, Alfred sends the sales report with the check, you know, <laughs> and, and, um, and that's nice, but you know, you can make money in, in millions of different ways. You know, you can make, you know, um, <clears throat> you can make money doing, doing almost, almost anything. So it, so when someone says to me that they've, and, and I appreciate every, I mean, everyone that buys a book, whether they comment on it or not, I, I appreciate it. So don't, don't take this the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Um, every, you know, everyone who, who, um, takes their hard earned money and, and invests it in, in, in the book and says, Oh, I think this book is going to help me. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, um, a lot of times as, as an author, you, you just see the, the numbers like, okay, yeah. the, the book has sold this many copies, uh, but you don't hear the human feedback. So, so when you when you say that, um, uh, you know that I take that to heart. Um, I just had a uh, there was a uh, gentleman on Instagram who who just um, did a post about my my video and and said that he was working with his students on on flams, uh, and the and his students were really starting to understand the the flam concept from my book mm -hmm. uh, when they were confused about some of the different you know different flam rudiments um so that that i i take to heart that that i think is is very um uh that's very very heartwarming because there's a lot that goes on in the process of writing yeah um, i can i can and, well imagine yeah you know, i mean i put and, a lot of material together for my students and and also yeah just looking for books that are effective and that cover things where I, yeah, like I was saying before, like the way a, you think you can get someone to buy something, you want them to use at least a good chunk of it. Um, and also, yeah, it just, it really comprehensively explains. Uh, I was going to do that, wasn't it? So there's the book. I've got yep. it there. Uh, I highly recommend this book to anybody who wants to like, kind of, I mean, I think of it as like deepening technical understanding. So, I mean, did, is this a book that you use with the beginning students as well? Or... Um, like, is there a certain a point in the process where you'll introduce the kind of thoughtfulness that you need to go into to understand all of this? Usually, yeah, usually I'll, I'll, I'll introduce the concept to beginning students, but um, I'll start with the book with intermediate students. Yeah, that makes so, sense to me. Um, so I'll use, I'll use books like, uh, are you familiar with Mark Wessel's um, Fresh Approach to uh, Snare Drum? Uh vaguely familiar with it yeah i've been looking for a really i've been looking for a sort of reasonably good snare drum book because i had his he wrote a book like a drum set book yeah um, yeah yeah and i found it was a little bit too like kind of uh step by step um mm -hmm. but yeah um so i haven't i, I think his uh mark wessel snare drum book is on my to buy list yeah his his book is is really good um mm -hmm. so what what i'll do is uh as the students working through through his book he does actually put he, he does actually have some of the down up tap tap uh when it comes to like paradiddles he'll he'll have the down up tap tap um but again his his book is not it's not about the level system so um so it's it's not about uh it's not about the level system it's more about introducing students to to rudiments and 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 snare drum snare drum reading uh, and he does it in, in in a very um very fun way there's there's play alongs uh there's play alongs and uh recorded examples but um i'll i'll sort of take it a step further and i'll i'll write in the uh or if i'm doing an online lesson i have it i have my my pages scanned with the alt you know alt or down or ups or taps mm -hmm. and i'll just share it with the student um um just long enough you know long enough so they could copy it in their book right so i don't want to violate any copyright laws but you know they 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 own the, they own the book and yep. they they write if it's a if it's a tw you know 12 bar uh rudimental solo they'll write in the you know if it's uh you know full tap down up tap tap full tap down up tap tap down up tap tap they'll, they'll write they'll write that in and it gets them it gets them used to it little by little by little uh because yeah. the, uh, because you're right, the level system is only about the level system. Yeah. So if uh, if I take if I take a beginner through that, it's going to be a little a little much. I found yeah. that um, that teaching the level system, the concept, of the level system, teaching the um, the ups, downs, fulls, taps, 
um, can be done without without my book. Now that's that's something that um, you wouldn't expect to hear from from an author of the book, right? But when when we go to when we go to the next level, that's um, that's when when I usually use that book. Now that that's if I'm teaching someone from the very beginning. If I'm teaching <laughs> someone someone from the very beginning, um, <clears throat> and they don't know what quarter notes are. It's going to be hard to use a level system. If oh, they yeah, don't know absolutely. what eighth notes are, it's going to yeah. be hard to use a level system. But if I if I get someone in at an intermediate or uh, an intermediate or or higher level, yep. then we could go into the level system yeah. because <clears throat> then we could go into the level system right uh, right from the start because they they already know the note values. So so now yeah. they're just moving back and forth and, and um, they're just moving back and forth and. If you um, if you take the um, the level system, if I let me just step back for, for a second. Um, when I was when I was studying with, with Joe, when I was studying with Joe Morello, he he asked me. I remember um, after a lesson one time, he asked me. He said, "Are you teaching these these concepts to your students? You know, the upstrokes, downstrokes." And I said, "Yes." Um, and I wasn't sure whether it was a trick question or not. I wasn't sure whether it was like, whether he was saying, well, watch out because this is the, this is going to be an advanced concept or, um, but, uh, but I, I was truthful with him. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm showing them uh, the concepts uh, before the level system was taught <clears throat> or before the level system was written. Again, I was writing out the, the motions in, in the mm -hmm. books, um, even before Wessel's book, I think it was teaching out of, um, the Vic Firth Elementary and Intermediate Snare Drum books, then, and uh, and Joe said, "Great, yeah, this that's the right thing to do, right?" Yeah. So I sort of took the ball and and ran with it, and and I wrote my own, um, I wrote my own little exercises, and I got hired to come into to schools, and I would teach, uh, I would teach rudiments in schools because in, in um, at least in the U.S. they they have to play through rudiments for their auditions. So if there's a yeah. District district band audition. They have to play paradiddles, um, slow, fast, slow. Yeah, yeah. open what, what they call open, close, open, five sharp rolls. All, all the different rhythmic cues. Um, so to get them playing that, to get them playing those, I would I would have these these handouts that I would uh, these printouts that I would give to students. And the band director there uh, by the name of Steve Smith, which is. <laughs> Uh, everyone, when I say Steve Smith, everyone thinks Steve Smith, the uh, the drummer from Journey, but it happens to be just a very Smith is a very common yeah, name. Yeah, it's not the most uncommon so, name. Yeah. Um, so he said to me, "Why don't you um, Why don't you put these into a book?" And I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I was like, "Well, I guess it's a good idea." But um, but again, I I took the ball and and ran with it, and compiled all the all the exercises i actually compiled too many uh to your point <clears throat> i actually compiled too many <laughs> yep. uh there there are too many pages and too many examples and with the help of steve uh steve fittick and also dave black who is the edit uh, who was the editor for for alfred uh mm -hmm. we sort of i chopped it down yeah. so that now it does contain just the right amount so so not yeah. all the fluff not all the the extra stuff <clears throat> and that's um so when you when you said the book is is sort of concise and to the point um that's wasn't me <laughs> that yeah, wasn't me right from you, the start you need those okay. external uh assistants don't you really yeah. to tell me those sort of things uh cool beautiful it, it, as i say it, it's just like a fantastic book for developing technique um your next book I, i'll do this at the beginning now where are we uh, note groupings and combinations for the drum set. It's also very good. It came out recently. I, I saw it mentioned here and there. I think um, Cruise Ship Drummer, he yep. he talked about it. I love yep, his uh, drum yeah. blog. Uh, I've had a few lessons with him as well. He's a good teacher. Um, and I think also the Facebook stuff came up. I think maybe you mentioned yep. it as well. And um, I just like the sound of it. And I thought, you know, obviously, because I enjoyed your first book, I'd have a look at it. So maybe can you can you give the I, I, I forgot to ask you with uh, the level system, but do you have like the elevator pitch for this book? Like what's it about and who's it for in like a, a quick couple of sentences? Yeah. So. <clears throat> 
Actually, um, it, well, here, here's here's another thing that that um, l- a little story when I was first auditioning for um, Capital University, I was playing through a I think it was a Pratt uh, a Pratt solo, just a um, drum core or rudimental style solo, and I got stopped by Bob Bryhop partway through. And Bob was there with one of the other with, with one of the other percussion teachers that, that was helping him out. And when you're doing an audition and you get stopped, you don't really think of it as a positive. You think of it as, <laughs> as a negative, like oh, I screwed something up and they don't they don't want to hear anymore. But he, he stopped me and he's and he uh, tapped the other uh, the other instructor on the shoulder. Um, younger the younger instructor. And he, he said watch his motions watch how he moves compared to the other people that we that we see audition um and see how natural and how flowing it is you know and by that point you know i had been been able to to sort of take a a breath and just sigh and like okay great it wasn't you know um yeah it wasn't anything negative so was this around? It was the, all had you about, been taking lessons with Morello already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I've been taking he has lessons. a very watery, um, fluffy sort of approach, hasn't he? It's yeah, really very, yeah, yeah. And and I guess at that point, um, at that point, a lot of the people were were playing very rig, you know, very rigidly. Um, you know, you there wasn't YouTube, so so people couldn't find out about all all this information. Um, so they, so they, uh, so he stopped me and he, and, um, he said, just, just watch. And so I was like, Oh, and, and I, and that was one point where I didn't have the motions written in. I didn't go down on a you know, Um, but it had been internalized. Mm-hmm. So that, that was a point where I realized that, I mean, up until that point, I thought I was playing this, the solo the same way that anyone else would play the solo. But at that point, I, I realized that it was internalized. Um, so the the level system allows you to um, the level system allows you to prepare for each note one stroke in advance. Instead of going like a lot of uh, like a lot of people would do mm-hmm. without without thinking uh, thinking about the next stroke, we're always thinking about the next stroke. So if if one um, if one stroke is accented and then we're leading into another accented stroke, we're going to do a full stroke. So now I'm ready to play another accented stroke, right? If I'm going from an accented stroke and my next stroke is an unaccented stroke, I'm going to do a down stroke. So, so if I do this down, tap. and then if I'm playing unaccented strokes and I want to, I want to prepare for an accent. Then I do an upstroke, which is basically just carrying the motion forward. We try and feel the stick in motion, and we help it up as it's moving. Right? Yep. Not, not this, not hit and then pull up. But as you feel the, it's almost as uh, I give the analogy of pushing a car. If you're pushing a car from a dead stop, it takes more energy. But if a car is already moving. You don't have to push too hard, right? So same thing here. If that stick is already in motion, it only takes just a little effort, hardly anything at all to, to help it the rest of the way back. Yeah. So, so those concepts are the ones uh, that are that are in the level system. And then we go into flams and rudiments and, and, and everything else. Um, and really, um, and I know you wanted to talk about the uh, the other book too, the the thing that I could say about the level system and note groupings is that they are um, they're used as as a bridge to get to uh, to get to another point. Right? So I'll, some people have asked me about the uh, some people have asked me about note groupings and mm-hmm. um, and they've asked me, well, is this a rehashing of the the Gary um, uh, Gary Chafee systems? And, and I, you know, and I really say no. And and I haven't studied the the Gary. I, I own the books. 
Um, but I, I, I haven't really taught out of them. I, I played, you know, I played exercises out of them just myself, just practicing. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I, I think I got uh, introduced to this concept through um, through my my classes with uh, Kim Plainfield, because Kim Plainfield. Okay, was, and I've got his book as well. That's like yeah, some yeah. heavy stuff. Was, he, yeah, so that that's where I sort of where I sort of learned this. So. Um, but I, I do have, you know, um, yeah, I do have some some students who uh, are interested in in uh, that in those concepts. But they, um, wh whether it's a Kim Plainfield book or, or if a student just, you know, if a student just comes to me and they're they're working on on some uh, Gary Chafee style material, um, I find that that sometimes it's hard to just jump right in. Right, it's hard to jump right into the same thing. Uh, same thing with the level system and um, and accents and rebounds. Right. Yeah. Or I mean, level yeah, that's and, that's the thing I, I was studies. comparing with the Chafee yes. book, which I, I I've been looking at recently. Uh, yeah, it just jumps into some fairly dense stuff, whereas this uh, your your book. It, yeah, there's a there's a parallel, but it's yeah. actually the way it teaches you how to do things is is more flexible. Um, and uh, it's kind of like, I, mean, I, I guess my kind of comparison between the level system and the note groupings book is the level system is really very focused on the mechanics of the thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the note groupings book is offering so really musical concepts. So regardless of what the technical yes. approach might be, uh, the rhythmic ideas in the book are applicable to absolutely anything that you play on the, the drum set. Yeah. Yeah, and and both of them, um, and both of them, and and probably because, um, as, as you said at the the beginning of our our chat here, um, probably because I teach students from age five all the way up, right? Um, it's not the same as if I'm teaching it at, at Berkeley, like uh, sure. like yeah. like Gary Chafee. So so Gary was able to give the students that, and they had already had had that prior experience of. Um, well, many of them. Yeah, yeah. I yeah had so the, the, the prior yeah, rhythmic yeah, experience. So, so what I what I uh, what I try and do with the level system and and with no, the note groupings and combinations for drum set. I just call it note groupings for short. But um, what I do with both of those those books is just take um, just take it from a beginner standpoint, as if someone doesn't know anything about the concept, and then bring and then bring them across that bridge. So I use that as, as a bridge so that they can feel comfortable with other concepts. Uh, yeah. So um, it's not the level system or accents and rebounds. It's not the level yeah. system or master studies. It's if someone's having, if someone's having a little bit of trouble jumping right into to the accent studies uh, in master studies or uh, into the accent sections of, of accents and rebounds, we use this. We use the level system as a bridge, as an introduction, yeah. as and as a bridge to get to get them there. And and when I say um, I hesitate to to say um, you know that we take it from the beginning because we do we do take it from the beginning, but it's not a beginning book. Um, the the exercises in the level system start with the basics. I guess basics would be would be a better term for it. Mm -hmm. And then we and then we bring we. Uh, we bring it forward so that by the time someone has gone through, practiced through the exercises in, in a level system, they're able to uh, to tackle the um, you know, tackle accents and rebounds, master studies, yeah. um, accent on accents, Del Delgren and Fine. Uh, mm -hmm. then now the same thing with note groupings. So with note groupings, um, the the idea is to take someone who has never. Um, has never really had any experience in, in, in that concept and introduce them to it. And then by the end, by the end of the book, um, by the end of the book, if they, um, if they want more information on it, if they want to go to, um, to some even more advanced uh, applications, they could go to, uh, they could go to um, the Gary Chafee material, they could go to uh, the Kim Plain, the this odd, odd note grouping section of the Kim Plainfield book, they could go to um, uh, Rick Ratton. Uh, I think it's Rick Ratton's book. You know, the, there's uh, so so my my books tend to be a bridge. They tend to yeah. be to be a bridge to to get you know to to get someone and, and that and that 
really, I mean, if you, if you think about what, what Dave Black would say, uh, Dave Black, the former editor from, um, from Alfred, mm -hmm. he would say, you know, you have to fill, you have to fill a void. And I think yeah. that that was the void. Um, the, the, those books filled some of those voids. It wasn't that there. Um, it, it's not that there was a lack of material out there, but That's no lack there of was a need for the inter, um, It wasn't that that there was a, a lack of material because the accent the accent exercises were there for for uh, accents and rebounds and all that. The odd note groupings exercises were there. Um, what the void was was an introduction. So yeah. yeah. So so um, so what's what, but like what's the kind of the 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 sort of catchy thing? Uh, what I'm very conscious of, and, and by sort of doing, and I, I'm still not sure what I'm doing with my YouTube channel really in terms of like I've done the whole like how to play this song and that song, mm -hmm. and you're kind of talking. Obviously, as a teacher, you're used to a, a very direct uh, sort of feedback relationship with your student. And when you're making a YouTube thing, you're kind of randomly throwing some idea out there and hoping yeah. somebody finds it interesting. Um, but I've become conscious, really, how many people are trying to, to work through uh, the process of learning the drums or anything themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're looking for these different sources. And so if we're thinking about that sort of audience, potentially, what are you going to what, what, what do you want to tell people like you need this book because this will open up? this in your drumming because to me it's actually represents some very fundamental bit of rhythmic knowledge well i i think um you know in a way <clears throat> one thing one one thing that i find with students is they tend to single stroke everything mm -hmm. yeah right left 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 um so that even that when you when you think about uh when you think about three note groupings five note groupings seven note groupings whatever uh, even if you just take a three note grouping uh, and, you, yeah, and you, a three note grouping would be the, three the pad, yeah, th right. three note grouping would be three with the three note grouping in 16ths right so uh, so three note grouping would be three three 16th notes over um or so, sorry three notes over a 16th note bass and uh usually the bass would be in four four times so so we'd have one two three four one right so we could fit we could fit uh, that in four times one, two, three, four, one, right? Um, and that's going to be on page. That's going to be on on page uh, seven, right? So one, two, three, four, one, and then we have one left over, right? Um, Two, three, four. Actually, sorry, my, my fault. Five. I was uh, I was thinking of a, of a different combination. So one, two, three, four, one. So we're able to play that that five times. One, two. So one, two, three, four, five, one. Now that gets a little cerebral because we can't really do do math and count at the same time. So what mm -hmm. I like to do, and I've I've heard people do that before, like one, two, three, four, five. And then and they're trying to do math in their head. Okay, if I go to the next measure, then I'm going to have uh, I'm going to play it so many times and have two left over. I want I want people to be able to feel those those groupings, right? Yeah. To feel one, two, three, four, one, right? And then if we extend it into the next measure, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Ah, there's two left over there. And then mm -hmm. if we go three three measures, one, two. Three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Right. Now it completes that that cycle with with uh, nothing left over. Right. Yeah, so, but there's there's tons of like grooves and fills already that that a knowledge of this like three group a uh, three note grouping within a sixteenth note context. Right. There's so much vocabulary in just that itself before we even get and you're covering uh three note groupings five note groupings uh, sevens 
Um, and you're, you're kind of it, it goes through 16th notes, but you cover eighth notes and, and also eighth note triplets as triplets, well. Yep, yep. So it's being able to fit those patterns and, and the the structure of the book, a lot of it you could play on a pad, but there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of information about how you bring it into the, the drum set. But I mean, the, the way I would approach it is to familiarize students with the patterns just by accenting on the pad with the simple stickings, whatever, yeah. whether it's single yeah. strokes or as you're doing like a right, left, left, or um, you've introduced uh, various stickings that are sort of rudimental. Uh, so is it, uh, there's like paradiddle diddles, for instance, for yep. six yes. note groupings. Um, so, yeah, and it, to me, this is very accessible, even at a very early stage, as long as somebody understands what eighth notes and sixteenths are, you could start at least introducing some of these ideas. And then, you know, it's a big rock fill in, in, in a three rope, ba -dum -dum, ba -dum -dum, ba -dum -dum, kind of thing. Yeah, it's already yeah. an application of that that you could relate to people at fairly uh, early stage of things and say, oh, that's a three note grouping. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically what, what I do is I, um, I have the, the appendix of the book as well. So if, so if, someone, is, if someone is not comfortable playing page, se uh, play, page seven, the, first, uh, the start of the first chapter, uh, they could go to the appendix of the book and work on, and work on that by itself. Right? Just work on one, two, three. One, two, three. And I have the voice count on the audio. Three, one, two, three. Or if we go two, two groupings. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then we go to three groupings. Now notice we're in three, four time and doing three note groupings. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. One. Right, so one, two, three. Well, it resolves much quicker, right? And then, and then we, we apply that to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, et cetera, right? And then I do the same thing with five note groupings. So, so when we go to the, the, the appendix section for, for the five note groupings, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, right? And then one, two, three, Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, and I go through through that until it resolves in five four, which obviously would take one measure of five four to resolve, and then after that we go to the we go to the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, until it resolves yeah. in, in five measures. And there's five, a look, there's a good selection of different stickings to 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 apply to each one exactly of these as right well. so, so when you're when you're playing when you're playing drum set uh, instead of instead of always playing one two three four one we could play one two three four one two three four one one two oh, I hit my microphone one, two three four one two three four one so so you could um, or yeah one With with the uh, the fifth note of the foot, one, yeah. two, three, four. Right. Yeah. So a lot of the so groupings there, you, you number... cover the sort of rests element into a, a right, grouping right. as well, which is yeah, be... again very useful. Right, because because uh, rhythm is not just notes; it's notes and rests. So one, two, three, four, one. So so we could play that five note grouping. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, one, two, three. So but what I one, like two, about that is you four, can e five. immediately hear what that is. In, in, that's familiar to me, and I want to go away and learn how to do that, you know. And so I think that that's, that's what makes this great. Um, yeah, because there's so much stuff that you very quickly get into, and you go, oh, that, that explains these, these rhythmic ideas that I've heard. Yeah. And then, and, and, you know, what you just played, you can easily flam your way around the kit or something with that. Right, yeah, and, and, and like you said, uh, I, do try and, I do try and make it musical. Yeah, so so if, you're, if you're playing... Um, if you're playing a drum beat, one, two, three, four, da 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 da, boom, right? Now, um, if someone hears that, if someone hears that, they don't necessarily know that that's a five note grouping. Da 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 da, one. Yeah. They just hear one and uh, e, uh, e, and e, one, right? Uh, the same thing is, as 
uh, in the air tonight with Phil Collins. Da 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 da. Right. So that that's one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two. Right. Um, but again, we uh, again I, I say that to to show the groupings, but I don't count it that way with students because then they're yeah. doing math in their head, and as soon as they do math in their head, if they uh, as soon as they do math in their head, they're going to lose the downbeat. One, two, three, four. Right, so it really is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Right? But uh, one, two, three, four. Right, and that that's a big and that's a big thing with me too is being able to count those uh, to count those sub or to count those uh, the quarter notes while playing yeah. while playing it because if you're just if you're just doing math and saying oh here's a combination of uh, of uh, seven and, and five so that's going to take up three beats in, in four four time. Um, Eventually, you're going to get lost. You're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, you're going to get lost. You might not get lost lost right away, but um, as soon as you know, as soon as your your uh, attention goes somewhere else, um, you know, as, as soon as you you know uh, you're playing a gig, you, a camera flash or something happens like, right? and now yeah. now you don't know where you are. But if you if you always had that one, two, three, four, one. Yeah. To, if you always but actually have working through those on. sort of exercises here, whether you're doing it as a drum set thing or on a pad, uh, to like tap your foot on the quarters or whatever through it, uh, it's just a, it strengthens your your time immensely. Yeah, and yeah. it's great. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, 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 I mean, every, everyone. Uh, if if you think about uh, Dave Descent, I mean, I have a student right now who's um, at Berkeley College of Music studying with Dave Descenso. Uh, you think of Dave Desenso, you think of, of uh, Benny uh, Benny Greb, uh, the uh, the late Gary Chester. I mean, <laughs> they all they all talked about counting, um, e either counting or singing, right? Because uh, some of them some of them don't um, don't necessarily say one, two, three. Uh, Dave Desenso does you know, one e and a two e and a. Yeah. Uh, but some of them would just say bop or dot 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 dot. That that's very important because. Um, because as soon as you uh, as soon as you lose that, you're losing your your internal time. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm fanatically. Uh, I mean, I think you know our backgrounds are probably very very different. I haven't been through the sort of same level of formal education, but I've been very fortunate to study with some amazing teachers, and I've been made to sing so much stuff. And in my teaching, I'm I'm fanatical about it. It's quite hard to uh, persuade people to verbalize whether it's counting or singing. Um, but yeah, I sing everything uh, when I'm practicing, and uh, I just think you know using the voice is such a powerful thing. So, so in a situation like this, if you're you know highlighting the quarter notes against these rhythms, or then you you sing the rhythms and tap your foot on the quarters, is a is a massive benefit to learning because singing is the first stage of any music understanding, I think. And I realize everything I know is kind of sung somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I wanted to touch on. Uh, I think that the the second book, the note groupings book, is a self published book that you've produced mm -hmm. and, and published it yourself. And the first book was published with a well known uh, music publisher, which is Alfred. Alfred. Um, yeah. Was was there is there anything like what made you decide to to do the book yourself? Is it just because it's an accessible thing to do now, or? I I think it was a number of reasons. Um, the thing that really. Um, the thing that really um, gave me the kick to do it, I think, was uh, was when I emailed Dave Black uh, from Alfred and realized that Dave had retired. Mm -hmm. And Dave was, you know, Dave was very supportive and, and very uh, respectful uh, with the level system. And I'm not saying that. And obviously, who, I've never had a bad experience at Alfred. Alfred, um, if I if I ask them for something, they'll. You know, um, uh, they're quick to respond and they're, they're very, uh, they're very flexible, but, um, that, um, that relationship with, uh, with an editor, um, that I had with Dave Black on, on the level system, even though I hadn't really, uh, spoken with him much except for at PASIC or, or something like that. Um, it was still, you know, I, I still knew that, um, that Dave, um, if, if I was going to have anyone be the editor, editor of the book, I thought, well, 
yeah, Dave's going to be the one to do it. Uh, but he, uh, he moved on to, uh, to some other things. He retired from, from Alfred. Um, and I thought to myself, well, Dave's, you know, Dave's retired from, from Alfred. Um, also, Alfred, I know uh, it, when, you, when you work with a publisher, um, you're working on their timeline. So if they say that their books are, uh, their books are done for 2023, and maybe it'll be out the last quarter of 2024. Well, that's uh, uh, do I want to yeah. do I want to wait that long? And also, with it being uh, with the pandemic, um, yeah, I was able to yeah you know, I was able to walk in before I was able to walk into like Sam Ash in New York City and and thumb through the through the collection of books. Oh, there's my book, right? And I knew that that was uh, I knew that physical stores were. Where people were buying, were still buying a, a good amount of books, even though uh, even though Amazon was taking a fair share of the market, um, I knew that uh, I knew that it was important to have the books in the stores, and I uh, still can get them in, in select stores. But um, really, I've gravitated more toward more toward online because that's. It tends to be where, where someone where people order. If I yeah. um, any, anything, if I say if I tell the student, well, you know, um, uh, I suggest that you get this or that, or, or um, they say, my, you know, I have this little wire music stand, this you know, little shiny wire music stand, but uh, it keeps falling falling over. Okay, well, yeah, uh, here, buy, um, get a Manhasset stand. If they buy a Manhasset stand. They come back. Uh, they come back next week, and they say, "Oh yeah, I got it. I got it. It came. It came in two days from Amazon." Yeah. Um, now, Sweet. Now, Sweetwater here in the U.S. is uh, is also a great company. So, so, um, but Sweetwater doesn't really do books. At least they don't publicize. They don't publicize books. Uh, yeah. They're more more of a gear company. Um, so when Did it comes you still to still sort of have access to the outside. Um influence that you had you said um the, the level system was sort of tightened up by the people at the publisher um did you have access to people to help you kind of finalize the uh, structure of the um the note groupings book as well not the not the musical concepts but i think because i had already written the level system and because of what i learned from that about about keeping it concise and to the point um I felt comfortable uh, going my own way with that, uh, but I did, and I think this is where where people have issue or where people um, have a lack of success with self publishing books mm -hmm. is they try to self publish it by going the least expensive route, mm -hmm. and none of us like to spend money. <laughs> you know? no. Uh, uh, well, uh, well, maybe some of us do, but but a lot of times it's on gear. It's I'm um, getting that shiny that shiny <laughs> new symbol, snare, yeah. you know that that shiny new symbol or that snare. So a lot of us don't like to spend um, spend money. So when we when we say okay, this is going to cost us so much for an editor or so much for uh, for a book design or a cover design, um, then we we say okay, well maybe I could just submit the word document and just have it uh have it just bare bones or or maybe i could just um have a, a cover designed just very inexpensively and it looks it, it looks and it reads like a um like a self-published book uh what I, what i wanted with with this was i wanted to have um uh to have the book edited right um so, uh, so I used uh, Holly from Bulletproof Services to uh, to edit it, um, and actually the um, the cover and the and the layout was done by the same person who did uh, the cover for um, yep who did the cover for a bunch of Berkeley books yep uh, a bunch of Berkeley books and in fact uh, in the in the dedication and the acknowledgement um, I also have you know Sean Gersberger. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, um, also Holly Atkins from, um, from Bulletproof. So, so Holly did the, um, did the editing of, of the text. She did the editing of the text and actually she, uh, she caught some musical things in there too. She's like, is this supposed to be there? I'm like, Oh, <laughs> okay. That's kind of so cool. She, uh, she, I, I think she, she had played a, um, a string instrument, uh, 
when she was you know when she was going through college and and that so so she actually caught like one uh, one or two musical mistakes in there. Um, oh, cool! That, that's useful. Isn't but yeah, it? The, but the lay the layout it was done by uh, the the book layout was done by uh, by Sean and Sean did the drum set. In fact, if you're familiar with this, that's her oh yes, cover. indeed, great book. Yeah, yeah, that that that's her cover. She designed that that cover. So I want I wanted it to be something that um, that when you pick it up, you don't know the difference between it being self published yeah. or, or not. It looks um, pucker. Yeah. So, and that and that too. So if if in the future I did want to have it distributed by Alfred, because you know um, the company is Hal Leonard Alfred, they they, they often have uh, distribution deals as well as publishing deals. So with with a publishing deal, they do everything. With distribution, um, they uh, obviously they they distribute, right? But I wanted it to um, I wanted it to be of that of that quality. Not mm -hmm. only not only the the content, but also but also the look and and uh, the look and appeal of of the book. Yeah. So That's that great. you know, and and like I said, uh, people you know uh, people are going to buy it on on Amazon. Just like they buy the level system on Amazon, so I, I've noticed that um, you know, level system is um, available. You know, it's, you know it's, it's available in numerous places. Uh, S Steve Weiss Music, they probably um, probably get a good amount of sales from there. Yeah. Um, but but I know you know Amazon is is that's that's the big <laughs> that's the big yeah. one. So I, I, think I mean, I'm I trying now to really... buy more from. We've got a local sort of percussion uh, bookshop called Southern Percussion, and I'm trying to buy more stuff from them. But every time, yeah. I think twice because I have to pay something for delivery. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, now here we'll see. Here in the U.S., um, we have uh, so Sweetwater is the one that, that I, I tend to deal with. So Sweetwater, uh, I have my, my rep uh, Patrick from from Sweetwater. He's he's great. Um, he supplied a whole bunch of stuff for the, uh, the gift bags and stuff for the uh, for the um, recital that uh, the recital that we did. Uh, but but like I said, I don't really feel like I'm taking food out of Sweetwater's mouth because they they're mainly gear, right? So mm -hmm. uh, so if a student wants a new, a, a new cymbal stand, say go to you know go to Sweetwater. Um, I don't really I, I'm I know it I think at one point uh, the level system was available from Sweetwater I don't even think it's available now I don't think most books are available I could be I could be wrong so uh, maybe someone can uh, hmm. in the YouTube notes someone could chime in but I don't um, it, it, it's it's difficult because like I said I I got my start teaching in uh, you know, a mom and pop store in, in a family owned store. And there's no family owned stores ar around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when I go, you know, when I go down, when I go down the street, uh, or not really down the street, but if I, if I go across town, I'm at a, I'm at a big box store and, and I'm at, um, and I, and I've had some experiences in, in those big box stores where, uh, from students and, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to, um, speak negatively about um, about any anyone or, or any store, but uh, but you know there have been occasions where um, I think they were trying to sell students top of the line gear because it was going to make a, a yeah. bigger commission, right? I mean, and, yeah, and that's one thing that, that stuff I, goes on in shops. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, whether it's yeah. a family-owned shop or, or 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 not too, but um, but I think that's why you know that's another reason why I don't feel as bad um, with having having things available on on Amazon and yeah, then recommending just, and then the recommending outlet. things like sweet like Sweetwater or like you say, I guess in your area Southern Percussion. I think those are are more uh, those are smaller. Even uh, Sweetwater uh, Sweetwater is a smaller. Um, a smaller business yeah but they just they focus on they focus on mail order i think all business is smaller than amazon yeah yeah and maybe yeah. apart from google whatever they're called abc abc alphabet whatever but uh, yeah. okay cool but, now um there's a couple of sort of general things we were going to uh throw into the mix uh and i, I sort of just bringing it back to the context i suppose of 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 what i'm my imaginary audience of youtube channels um which is people 
you know, looking to get some information. They're not always under, um, and you know, maybe this is a thing, but we're, well, we both teach. Um, I definitely think that having the benefit of lessons with a teacher that could kind of respond and give you feedback, uh, quite considerable. I still take lessons. I don't, do you still uh, take lessons? Um, do you ever find yourself still seeing a teacher? Every, every now and every now and then, um, yeah, I, I uh, took. Usually, it's uh, a one-off lesson where where I just uh, if I'm maybe yeah. if I'm in a in a town, uh, if I'm in a city or in an area. Um, so I have uh, yeah, I've taken one-off lessons, just you know, just one single lesson with uh, John Riley, um, with the late Ralph Peterson. Mm -hmm. uh, so th things like that uh, where. Um, where you get it's not necessarily a, about um, a continual process, but but more or less about inspiration and, and just really um, and just really giving yourself a, a, a different perspective. Yeah. So as as pro lesson people, at the same time, you know, I, I sort of recognise that people are trying to find out stuff for themselves, but there's lots of like weird not very helpful information that gets thrown around as well so for the little i don't know um i don't know meme moment or whatever i thought we'd bring up like what do you think are some unhelpful beliefs that people have when they're learning the drums um i think an, an unhelpful belief would be that something is too difficult that reading especially reading that reading is too difficult um because if you if you go in with that mindset, you're not going to uh, <laughs> you're not going to going to be successful at reading. I mean, if, if mm -hmm. I um, <clears throat> if I try and explain to someone um, how to change a tire on a car, <laughs> and they and they look at me like this is going to be the most difficult thing ever, then it's not going to be it's not going to be easy, right? There, um, so. I think if, if someone goes into to it with an attitude of of like, reading is difficult and, and for some reason for some reason that's the one thing that that keeps coming up over and over again. Well, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to learn how to read. You know, some people say to me, "I'd like to learn how to read music," but I just I heard it's uh, I heard it's really difficult, and yeah. I don't know where they <laughs> I don't know where they hear it from. Yeah, uh, but they 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 hear that it's difficult. I um, have a suspicion that it's from people at a young age who are sent to piano lessons. And I think a lot of beginning piano lessons are throwing in rhythm and note values, uh, yeah. not note values, but you know, rhythm and, and tone or pitch or whatever yeah. at the same time. And a lot of young students are overwhelmed by that from a few piano lessons. And then they're like, ah, I don't want to do it. Yeah. And because I find a lot of adult students are quite intimidated by the thought of learning how to read. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that it, that is a really unhelpful belief of people coming to learn the drums so hey potential drum students don't be afraid of reading it's not that difficult yeah and and also when when a student comes into lessons um there has to be a certain amount of trust for the teacher and that's um this, they have to trust the teacher and that that could be a good thing or a bad thing because um i'm not sure um how, how it is in the uk but here in the us you don't need any type of certifications to teach so yeah, sometimes no, when yeah sometimes when you trust the teacher it's like okay well it sounds like the teacher knows what they're talking about but do they really <laughs> mm -hmm. so um so i guess they're um so for that i think students need to do initial research they need to find out what the teacher what the teacher's background is but but when but when they uh when they have that trust for the teacher and the teacher asks them to do something I think they um, they need to be re, re, uh, they need to be receptive. You know, mm -hmm. for instance, I had a student who did not want to count, and I just and I and I said to him, I said, you know, I you know, um, well, actually, he he said, let me go back. He said, um, I can't count out loud and play at the same time, and I said, well. If you were teaching someone how to ride a bicycle, and that uh, and that small child said they can't steer and pedal at the same time, I said, "Would you quit on them?" And he's like, "No." I said, 
I said, well, why would you expect me to quit on you? And just say, oh, okay, well, you, you're, the one, you're the one person who can't, who can't count and play at the same time. Or you're the one person who can't, ride, who can't steer and pedal at the same time. It's, um, so it's about, it's about that level of trust. And, af- mm-hmm. and after that, he, he, sort, he sort of got it. It's like, okay, um, yeah, I am, yeah, I, I need to. And, and, then I, um, and then I did say, you know, I did say to him, you know, I've had success with, with a number of students, right? And you, and you may know some of these students and you may have seen, have seen them at the reci- at, at, play on, on our recitals or, or seen them uh, on, on my Facebook page, congratulating them for getting into this college or that college or whatever. So there has to be that, that level of trust. Yeah. And after that, um, after that, he's, he's like, he came in and next week he was counting. Right? Yeah. Um, so sometimes, so sometimes you just need to challenge, a, uh, challenge a student in, in a helpful, in a helpful way, you know, not, not in an argumentative way, but, uh, but if I, cha- uh, if I challenge his students and say, you're the one person in the world who can't do that. Yeah. That's that's hard to yeah you know, that, that that's hard to believe. I mean, I don't believe it. Do you, do you believe it? And the yeah. students like, well, I guess not. And then after you know after a while, they they start to realize that that yeah it, it it's going to take it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, but yeah. only a little only a little bit. It's not, yeah, not much. That's the thing. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's no. You know, once, once you've counted, I, I I tell my students because there's a lot of reticence for counting. Uh, oh, I'm counting in my head. No, then you're not counting and so on and so on. I just, and uh, yeah. And I say, look, if you put put your mind to this for like two weeks, um, that's it. You'll be able yeah. to do it. That's it. And then you can just do it. Um, cool. So uh, what's your number one piece of advice for people starting out with the drums? Is there, is there have you got a snappy... We're in the internet age, right? <laughs> so yeah. have you have you got have you got a snappy um like one bit of advice, somebody picking up their sticks, what would be a, a good thing for them to think about? I would say do your research and find the best teacher that you could find. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. because yeah. <clears throat> because the the way that it, it usually goes is people just walk into walk into a place. Uh, they may walk into a music store that offers lessons, and that teacher may not have any experience. Right? And, and again, I'm not not speaking negatively because I got my start. Uh, I got my start at a, teaching in a music store. Yeah. But um, I think you have to um, with, with you know with the money that people are spending on lessons. I mean, it's it's something that people that people have to budget uh that people have to work into their budget Mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that uh you want to make sure that the teacher that you're working with um is experienced uh in play in playing and in teaching right um because i've i've had i've had too many students who who came to me after um without being able you know with taking months and months of lessons and you open a book that has quarter notes either on drum set or on on snare drum, and they don't know what a quarter note is. Yeah, you know? and and I and I look at um, and they may bring in some papers from their lessons, and they look like hieroglyphics. Like it doesn't yep. even look like doesn't even look like like tab like tab like the tab from back in the day when people would just type things out on 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 a uh, on a computer like X means symbol or you know uh, mm-hmm. is this little circle means a um, a snare drum, um, and the parent, you know, the, um, and usually in that case, it's, uh, you know, it's the younger, younger student. And the parent may say to me, um, did I waste money on lessons? And again, I don't speak negatively about any other, any other <laughs> teachers, but I would just, uh, but usually my answer to them is like, I'm not going to answer that question, but I can give you something to think about. If your child took piano lessons for um for half you know for for half a year and couldn't read uh you know couldn't read the first few notes in in a beginner piano book mm-hmm. what would you think right yeah. and i would just i would just leave it at, leave it at that um so you do i, I think and it, it's 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 hard because students and parents don't know what they're they're really looking for you yeah. know 
Uh, so, I mean, so there is there there is that there is that trust. Like if yeah. I if I wanted to, um, you know, if, if I wanted to um, to find out how to use um, InDesign, which is uh, the program that that my uh, lay, uh, that Sean used mm -hmm. uh, to lay out the book. If I wanted to um, to find out uh, more about that program and said, well, I want I want to learn that program, I would I would look for someone with experience. Uh, because someone could maybe talk a talk a good game, right? Um, when I, when I go to first see them, but um, if I if they don't have the experience to back it up, it, it's um, then I may uh, then I'm 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 gambling. I'm taking that mm -hmm. gamble yeah. that I might be getting my money's worth. I might not. So like for for me, I I try and go to the um, to the best. And, and that's, you know, it's hard to do uh, when you're first learning something, because if you're first learning something, if you're first learning drums, you're not going to go to um, Joe Morello, right? Joe didn't, Joe didn't take, you know, um, obviously he's passed on now, but Joe didn't take um, beginning students. Mm -hmm. He would pass beginning students along to, over to his students, right? Um, but um, there has to be, you know, there has to be, at least a little research so that people know that they're getting their money's worth. Yeah, it's a very, yeah. very, very good suggestion. Do your research, find a, a teacher with the right kind of background and experience, I suppose. So my last question for you is what would you recommend as like an essential drum book? Aside from we know all those obvious stick control, syncopation everybody goes on about or shape in, but are there any kind of you know, even a hidden gem or something, but that you think is a would benefit anybody learning the drums. Yeah, um, actually, I just had a uh, just had a lesson yesterday. I just taught a lesson to a gentleman in Canada, um, and he he just did his his first lesson, and he was talking about a number of different concepts. Like he wanted to uh, do the jazz, jazz coordination. He wanted to work on technique. Um, he he'd already bought the the level system. I guess that's how that's how he found me. Um, and he was saying, well, yeah, I'd like to get into Latin and I'd like to get into a lot of, a lot of this, this other stuff. And when you, when you think about it, okay, if you want to get into Latin, you could go, uh, you could do uh, Bob Malibu and, and Frankie uh, Wiener's book, right? Um, the Afro Cuban. Afro Cuban, -Cuban for, stuff, isn't it? For yeah. drum set, yeah. Uh, funk and, and uh, linear funk. You could get into future sounds from David Garibaldi. Mm. Uh, you could do, uh, for, for jazz coordination, you could do uh, the syncopate, you could do syncopation with all those, uh, the different combinations. You could get into the, the um, let's see here, for uh, Brazilian, Duduca de Fonseca's uh, uh, Brazilian rhythms for a drum set. Um, you, could, you could go into like some of the substitution things, Casey Shirell. Um, mm -hmm. So there, you know, there, there, I just named off five, five, uh, five drum books um, but I told him, I said, it would, you know, how long is it going to take us to, to really go through five advanced drum books? It'd take quite, quite a while. Right. Uh, and I think that's where people get, get a little discouraged and that's where they get burnt out too, because, yeah. because they're, they're halfway through, they're halfway through a, a Latin book and they're like, okay, well, do I just sort of quit the Latin book for now because I'm getting burned out on Latin and switch to something else? And yep. it, it just feels like it just feels like they can't budget their budget their time. Yeah. Um, understandably, understandably. And as a teacher too, as a, as a teacher too, sometimes it's like, Oh God, it's going to take forever to get through this, through this book. Um, you know, the students doing great with jazz, but I, you know, I really want to um, work on some some more contemporary funk and, and everything else with them. So that's where that's where this book comes into into play. Okay. Yeah, I've got that actually. I haven't looked at it in a lot of depth, so it's, that's interesting. Yeah. So how does that cover all these topics then? So I took I took this uh, I took the course on this book with I Kim I should Plainfield. Say the name. It's Advanced Concepts by yeah, Advanced Kim, Concepts Kim from uh, Kim Plainfield. Yeah. Yep. Um, I took the the course on this book with Kim Plainfield at Drummers Collective. It was oh, a six, okay. uh, six week course, two, uh, I believe two hours each week. So 12 hours, so 12 hours just on this book. Right? Um, and he didn't explain it at the time. Um, well, he didn't, uh, he explained the book obviously, right? He, he, we went in well in depth with the book. Um, but one thing that I figured out afterwards, um, and maybe I was just a little bit naive was that the title of the book 
advanced, and this is one thing that, that um, Steve Fittick got me thinking about when it, with the level system, because it wasn't named the level system. It was like natural technique or whatever. And Steve mm-hmm. was like, it's about the level system. Name it the level system. <laughs> you know? um, so thinking about the, uh, the, the title of the book, Advanced Concepts. Well, that's what, that's what it is. So he's taking, uh, he's taking these concepts from all different books not mm-hmm. in a pla- not in a plagiarizing way because if it were in a plagiarizing way I I would have seen it right from the start right but he's ta- he's taking concepts from new breed there there's new breed style exercises in 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 this book mm-hmm. there's um, Gary Chester new breed there there's the Latin Frankie Malibé Frankie Malibé taught at the same school as as Kim uh, so so they were so they were close so obviously. Mm-hmm. He incorporated the the um, the Latin grooves, not to the extent that, that Frankie Malave did, right? Yep. But um, syncopation style exercises, the jazz coordination style exercises, that's in here. He actually had a the book used to come with a pullout section here, but I think the pullout section got lost <laughs> in like when when music stores when people were thumbing through the pages. So now it's actually built into the book. Now it's actually the last few pages of the yeah, book. Yeah, there's so a, this a bunch the, of reading pages the, at the back. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah. is this is what it what it used to look like. So those were some of the reading exercises. Oh, cool. So okay. some of these some of these are like the um, uh, like what they call the melodies. How they call call them the yeah. melodies in in uh, New Breed, and some of them are are uh, syncopation style exercises. So when you go through the book, you're not burnt out. Number one, you're not burnt out because you're not just you're just working for months and months and months and months and months on on one one particular topic. Yeah. Um, and also because you're being introduced to those topics, it's almost like you're uh, it's almost like you're um, at a uh, at like a food tasting. And you have all these all these new foods and you may you may like all of them. But there may be one or two of them that you absolutely love, right? And you go to the chef and you say, where can I get recipes for more of this, right? Yeah. And, that, and that, I think, is the beauty of, of, of this book. Because yeah. if someone's working on this book, uh, if we're working on this book, and someone really is getting into the, someone's really getting into the, um, well, let's say the odd note groupings, right? If they're really getting into the odd note groupings and they want... Um, and they want more on that, you know, yeah. Then we could work. Well, we could go into my book and work yeah. on it. If someone's yeah. if someone's really getting into the um, the the like linear funk, we could go into uh, we could go into one of the books. Maybe um, maybe a David Garibaldi. Maybe Future Sounds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, if someone's getting into the Bra- Brazilian, we could we could work on um, we could work on um, the Duduca de Fonseca book. So yeah. it, it's it it's. I, I think it's it's sort of a hidden gem. Yeah, get get the Plainfield book before you decide to mold, move to Porto Alegre for two years or whatever to, to get your samba to, chops together. To what? what to, you know, before you move to Brazil to study with Kiko Freitas or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do some Kim Plainfield to test the waters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 an amazing it's an amazing book. And, and like I said, it, it, I think it's a, a, a hidden gem. It's It's one that... Um, it's one that probably should be in the top, you know, top 20 of, of drum books, but, yep. um, but there's, the, the market is just so, so flooded yep. and, uh, you know, the market is just so flooded and, and, and I'm sort of, I'm sort of like you, if, if I pan the camera over, we'd see filing cat, you know, uh, two drawer filing cabinet, two drawer filing, you know, four drawer filing cabinet. And they're, they're filled with, they're filled with books. Yeah. And I think of trying uh, to compile a, a, a nice solid, you know, the top 10, books that you would actually play from cover to cover or whatever yeah yeah um because yeah there's there is this there's, there's so much saturation of stuff uh and yeah i, I don't know what to do because it's in some sense as well the book with the three good pages i don't want to pirate those three pages so i end up just ignoring yeah. uh, the content so you're looking you're always looking for that good book so um, like you're saying about like the wessels book gives you uh a solution to all the early snare drum stuff and so on so yeah finding those books that are really comprehensive that you can get stuck into is is, is really uh is would be interesting yeah. to put a definitive list together and yeah and for um and for you and i you know um i think other people who are listening to this podcast 
that are contemplating teaching, I, I think that that's also something that they should they should think about. They should think about researching the different methods out there. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean that you need to buy every single book on the on the market on on a certain subject. Um, but it sounds like you, it sounds like you have done the same thing that, that I've done. Just ordered ordered books, and sometimes we just order them. We look through them, put them in our filing cabinet, and mm -hmm. um, we might I might t I might take it out during during a lesson if if a student is uh, maybe ha has an audition that requires sight reading. Right? Yeah. So, um, it, so I might just take it out during the lesson and say, here, sight read, you know, sight read this. Yeah. So, so, uh, it is, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not wasted money, but I could be assured when, when, when a student comes in and we're working on, uh, we're working on a book, I could be assured of telling that student, in my opinion, this is the best book on the yeah. market that I found on this. And I think, um, and that's one thing too with uh, with some of the the music stores that I've that I've taught at, uh, not the first music store um, the, where where I got my start. They were they were very accepting of of what what book that I taught at. Uh, but I remember um, just starting to teach at this one music store, and uh, and I said, oh well, I'm gonna, we're going to be uh, I'm going to be using this book you know, for snare drum, this book for technique, and this book for for uh, for drum set mainly. And then you know obviously there's uh, some others. I'm like, could could you stock those three? Mm -hmm. And uh, the person in charge was like, well, wait, stock those three? We, we already have drum books in stock. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but I, I took a look. It, it, was, it wasn't those. You know, it's like, oh, but usually the drum teachers that we hire, they just, they just teach out of whatever we have. I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, no that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, I think for, for, for people who are, are starting to teach, you know, um, you know, do you know? Do some do some research, and and don't think of it. You know, um, don't think of it as, as something that's going to pay off right then and there. You know, most people who start to teach don't teach full time right right away. Yeah. Um, so so you think of it as an investment. Um, so a lot. I know a lot of a lot of people online. I'll read and uh, I'll read things online, and they'll say, "Well, um, I'd really like to make some extra money on the side, so I'm gonna I'm gonna teach." Yeah. yeah. And and I, I hesitate. You know, when when I'm reading that, I, I it sort of um, sort of puts a bad taste in my mouth because it's like, yeah, it's like it's, you're you're doing it. You know, they're doing it for for the wrong re you know for the wrong reasons. You you yeah. want um, the yeah you know, the money is um, the money will come. I mean, obviously um, now this this studio uh, this studio is in my house, uh, so I have. Um, so I have a, a tri a tri level house. So the, so the mm -hmm. first the first level is just studio. So I have the, the studio, the waiting uh, the waiting room for the students, and a separate mm -hmm. restroom for the students. So this is um, so this is all you know this this is all business. Mm -hmm. um, nothing. You know, no one's walking through the house or anything. And then yep. and then the rest of the house, the the, the other two levels, those are um, those are you know basically where we live. Yeah. So that's cool. So I have people traipsing through my house to come to my studio. <laughs> uh, so, so obviously, yeah, money does play, money does play a factor in it. Uh, you know, money does play, pay, uh, play a factor because you have to pay, you have to pay the bills and you have to pay the rent mm -hmm. and, and everything else. But I, I think a lot of times people are like, Oh, uh, uh, let me find an easy way to make money. And an easy way to make money is going to be teaching. Yeah. When they've never done it, when they've never done it before, and yeah. actually, it's I think the first the first few years of teaching really um, would probably be if I were to if I were to do it over again, the first few years of teaching would probably almost be break even, <laughs> you know? yeah, uh, because because I I would want to um, I would want to invest in you know invest in a number of of, of drum books to find to find the best one for me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. again, uh, with, you know, with it being internet, yeah, we have previews online, but we can't go to the music store and just thumb through, yeah. uh, thumb through every single page. So I think that would be, um, that would be a, a big part of a big part of it for, for me is just going and finding the, the best, uh, the best methods available yeah. and also, uh, and also charting out some type of curriculum because, um, another thing that, I, that I've heard from students that come to me um, is that um, 
I'll ask, you know, I'll ask them, I'll say, okay, well, what have you been, what have you been working on? Um, you know, if maybe their teacher moved away or maybe they moved from a, uh, from a different area and they're, they're, they're new to the town. And, um, the, I'll, I'll ask, well, what have you been working on? And, and, uh, the student might say something like, well, um, the teacher usually asks me what I want to work on. I'm like, well, like <laughs> where's the, you know, where's the curriculum? So I think, um, I think for, for teachers too, it has to be flexible, but when someone first starts teaching, they also need to think about a curriculum where, where you're going to go. Yeah. Because I mean, that's been, for me, it's been an interesting challenge to find the right balance where the student is kind of driving the direction of things, but I've got a map of all the stuff they need to learn. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go, oh, okay, we're going this way, but always sort of driving in, in a particular direction of acquiring those things. It, yeah, that, that's yeah. part of the skill, isn't it? And, uh, and yeah, I was very lucky that my teacher mentored me when I started. So I had somebody I could phone up and you know, say, well, what do I do with this? Yeah. And he, you know, he'd tell me off if I wasn't doing the right yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, and, and the level of the student really, um, really is to be taken into consideration too. Yeah. Um, if, if someone's an advanced student, obviously you're going to be able to, to go off in a different, in a different direction. If someone's a, a beginner student, you can't bypass, <laughs> you can't bypass the fundamentals or else they're going to be, they're going to be a loss. Yeah. yeah. I try to get them to, yeah, it's, that's a, a complex one I find here, but I think that there's, there is interesting cultural differences between the way uh, you know, sort of music learning happens. I, I think there's a lot more of the formal uh, pathways because you've got all these bands and stuff in school mm -hmm. and we don't really have that here. Uh, and so that the kind of where you might find yourself going as a, as a musician or a student, is, it's, it's a bit more open-ended here. And so I think that people find their feet a bit later on in this country yeah. and then they find themselves going to like university to study jazz but they come in there not really knowing anything about it and then uh they acquire it all very suddenly so i think i think that england has a less kind of um uh i don't know it's less formalized here i suppose there's there's a very different culture but um yeah i i don't know it's a fascinating i don't know the whole thing about teaching is is you want the teacher to be into it so you know you you started off um you know, you just just found yourself teaching in the local music shop, and I did something quite similar. And as I say, I had my teacher was a mentor to me at the time. Um, but yeah, if you, I think if you like, and it, you know, you really want to teach and you enjoy the process, then you, you know, I, I don't know. I'm one of those people. I'm always looking to learn and expand. So I've so since my teaching career sort of uh, started, I've been taking lessons with, you know, various figures within sort of drumming education uh, as well. So when I have a drum lesson, it's not just to learn drumming, but, you know, I, I work with lots of teachers and you know, just find out everybody's perspective. So I'm really into developing a, a good teaching approach. So, yeah, I think some people who come to it casually thinking uh, that it's a, a good way, I sort of understand why people think, you know, it's quite a pleasant way to earn some money. But if they're not really committed to, you know, trying to develop a really good relationship with their students and help them learn what they want to learn, then uh, then they're not necessarily going to be uh, the best person to see, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I think, you know, we you've given me quite a lot of your time i suppose it yeah. might be a good idea to wrap this conversation up yeah yeah um i wanted to mention you're available to teach students via the internet as well you teach on skype yep so yep. Uh, if anybody enjoyed jeff's books or enjoyed this conversation and would like to um sort of check out the opportunity to have some lessons you don't have to be in richmond virginia to get some lessons with jeff uh, have you got a sort of main type of student that you would tend to work with online or well you know it it depends uh like like for instance uh, i said yesterday i had a student call in from from canada um and that student had already um you know gone through some of the john riley material gone, you know so um i think yeah i think if a student is um at an intermediate to advanced level, um, the you know, online uh, works works very well. Yeah. Um, although I, I even have students here in Richmond that are online. 
and they're beginners. So I don't need to uh, sit in a traffic jam to get. To yeah, them yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that's so so that's also something too. So, uh, so I do I do uh, accept students of of all ages and levels, uh, yeah. online and in person. Um, I. And, and one reason, you know, one reason why I say you know, more intermediate and advanced is because I don't want to take I don't want to take students away from um, from local teachers. Right. Joe Morello was like that, too. He, he um, w when you call Joe up um, for a lesson uh, and you got his wife, Jean, on the phone, uh, Jean would Jean would say, um, you know, Joe does not accept students who are already studying with other teachers because he mm -hmm. was very respectful of that. So. Um, I don't want to, um, you know, if, if someone's, um, let's say, in your area, right, and they could walk in, they, they could drive to your studio, studio in 10, 15 minutes, I'd rather have them study with you mm -hmm. than ha uh, in person and have, the, and have that, that connection, that local connection, right, yeah. um, then, then, have them, um, then have them call me. Because I don't want to take I don't want to take students away from from other teachers. Uh, that being said, if someone's if someone's out in the middle of nowhere, you know, um, I think I had um, there was one. I think the first Skype lesson that I ever did was uh, with a drum teacher who was like in an island uh, or, or I don't know if he was in Aruba or where, wherever. Um, but he he said he was the only drum teacher on that island and or, or in that location and and didn't have anyone else to study with and, and just wanted to uh to get some new ideas i think yeah. that that's great and i also for for beginners if a beginner is um maybe growing up in a small town like like i grew up in where we didn't really have many uh many options mm -hmm. and it's the option is maybe studying with someone who just graduated from high school and they their only experience is high school is you know drum uh, marching band in 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 high school or studying you know, or or doing online lessons then then yeah that that's uh, that's the type of student that that that's the type of beginning student that i think uh would yeah. work well with with me because i've had if, a lot of success already, as well yeah. with people who are a bit remote and and we're doing online lessons and even young kids beginners and so on it works pretty well uh, yeah. yeah and and um and, and like i said i think it's um yeah, it, it's about being re respectful to uh, to other teachers mm -hmm. um where and and that's that's something that uh, I I've been lucky that that uh, with with the books and and um, with the books and with my resume, I don't do a lot of advertising outside of the area. I, mm -hmm. I do advertising in in Richmond, um, but but that was also something that that sort of um, that I was contemplating. I was like, should I advertise in in other markets for uh, for online lessons? Yeah. And if I did, uh, I would want to make sure that that was, like you said, a remote area that yeah. didn't have access to, to in-person instruction. Because I, yeah. because I think it's very, I think it's very important. Joe, Joe Morello uh, said, uh, said this. Uh, Joe said that there's room enough for everyone. Yep. Because, you know, a lot of, because um, Joe experienced a lot of the New York um and not not that all New York is this way, but um, but the the cutthroat like oh I gotta get you know I, I gotta beat this person out for this gig or I gotta get the you know uh, I yeah. gotta uh, um, underbid for this gig or I gotta I gotta do that and and Joe and Joe just was like laid back and Joe just said there's there's room enough for everyone right? yeah so so um, so yeah if someone is in an area that that um, that they can't find a, a um, an experienced instructor i'd be glad to um yeah. glad to take them on or um yeah and again for for advanced uh, for intermediate and advanced students for people who want to know more about um about the concepts in in my books yeah. then uh then ob obviously yeah that uh, yeah. i i have i get a i get a lot of that i get a lot of um uh, students who just may, maybe even just want to take one lesson on on the level system so they yeah. can uh so that they know that they're starting it out correctly and and then they they take, take i'm it thinking from there. about it i'm going to maybe have a lesson with you and can nitpick yeah. yeah my level system knowledge yeah so basically if you're not in northwest london you can look up jeff and have a yeah. lesson yeah yeah but, um yeah okay brilliant i really really appreciate your time i found this very interesting conversation i'll put links to your books and your website and so on uh, right. under the video so anybody can look you up uh right. have you got any f sort of final words no i think that's yeah, i think we 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 covered a lot today yeah i think okay beautiful um, so that wraps it up 
I'm going to sign off with my you better go off and practice uh, catchphrase there <laughs> so everybody can go and uh, when they finish watching this go off and grab your practice pad and, and do some level system work yeah. get Jeff's books because they're cool I like them yeah I'll get, I'll get you links uh, I'll get you links to uh, to my Facebook and um, the, the Facebook my um, teaching website the note groupings web website and on the note grouping website there's uh, preview there's previews so if uh, e even if uh, you go to Amazon and see the previews, uh, there's separate previews on on uh, the Note Groupings website um, that, that you could check that you could check out. And there's all the audio for the book as well. So if someone doesn't even need to buy the book to uh, to get the audio. No, the audio is not okay. going to audio is not going to do much without the book. But yeah. you could sort of hear if you just want to uh, if you just want to scroll down through it and, and hear some of the different drum grooves and the different different drum fills and, and solo ideas. Uh, you could go through all, all that. I made that accessible to everyone, whether they bought the book or not. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate right. it. Right. It's Cheers. been great talking to you. All right. Great. I'll see Bye. you online.